Okay. Um, oh, I should. So I've got three yeses on the AP. To, at least three yeses, maybe four. Are you a yes? You're a yes. You're a yes. You're a yes. You're a yes. I don't know about you yet. Okay. I remember you sent me the email and I had no clue what it was actually yeah, about or if you're going to talk about it in class or not. I never actually said that. Um, yes. You did tell me yes. I didn't remember. Yeah, you did tell me I yes. I was going to get back to it and then I haven't. It it like so, May it? it's May... Yeah. Um, it's, it's a Tuesday, I think. Um, yeah, we got to submit our order here pretty soon. Yes. So what happens if we don't take the Then you have to take your my semester yeah. test. <laughs> the AP exam? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So it's I think what is it, ninety five dollars, ninety nine dollars, something like that. Ninety seven. Um just hit up your parents for it. But um Okay, so, but if you pass it, it's four college credits. So, that's pretty good. So. All right, here we go. Um, derivatives in context. Okay, classic, classic, classic. A calculus problem. Water is filling a pool. The function W gives the water pool level in meters after 10 minutes. What's the best interpretation of the following statement? The slope of the line tangent to the graph of W, the water filling the pool, at T equals 5, time equals 5, equals 0 0.1. Okay? So, the slope, slope is talking about what? The what of the function? The rate of change, but the derivative come on that's all we've talked about this year well that's a, not all we talked about but it's the main focus so that's the derivative so the derivative at five seconds is 0 0.1 0 0.1 thus is the as you said rate of change okay so our rate of change at a certain time okay so at after five minutes the pool is being filled at a rate of 0.1 meters per minute or is it after five minutes the pool is being filled at a rate of 0.1 minutes minutes per meter what would it be a or d a, a it would be definitely meters per minute because that's the rate of change okay on this one What's the best interpretation of the following statement with D being the length of the day and N being the number of day of the year? D prime or D prime of 10 equals three. Well, that's the first derivative of the day. And it's which day? 10th day. And it's getting, the day length is getting point three, So it means it's positive three. So it's increasing at? Three minutes per day. On January 12th, 10th, the day length is increasing at a rate of three minutes per day. Okay. 
The next one. Um, what's the slope of the tangent line of P at T equals 2 is equal to negative 10? P is the population of a town T years after it was founded. So two years after it's founded, the population is doing what? Decreasing at a rate of 10 people per year. So after two years, the de town's rate is decreasing at 10 people per year. Per year, per year would be the acceleration of the decrease. Okay. All right. So when we get into functions, the position is where you're at at a specific time. That's an original function. Velocity is the change of distance divided by change of time, which is the first derivative of the position function. Okay, so velocity is first derivative of position. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Okay, so if you're looking at it compared to position, it's the change in position divided by time divided by the change in time. So that's the divided by time divided by time thing. Okay, so acceleration is the first derivative of velocity so it's the second derivative of position you need to have that in your minds okay so position function is just a function velocity is the first derivative of position acceleration is the second derivative of position or the first derivative of velocity okay now let's look at some graphs position versus time graph this is you at home okay <laughs> <laughs> this is you three miles from home what would this be you back at home again okay so this would be like three miles let's just call it west so where would this be three miles east and this would be back at home again now um so you're going away from home you're going back towards home away from to home back towards home so just because you're negative doesn't mean you're um going slower or anything like that it's just where which direction you're traveling in okay that's position versus time Velocity versus time. Here, and I think everybody can understand this, you're speeding up. Okay? What are you doing on this part? You're slowing down. Okay? Here, what are you doing here? You're speeding up in the opposite direction. Here you're slowing down in the opposite direction. Okay? So, um, here you're getting farther away. You're still getting farther away, but you're slowing down. Here you're getting closer to where you originally were, but getting faster. Here you're getting closer to where you originally were because it's the opposite of this, and you're slowing down. Okay? So, It'll be forwards versus backwards and speeding up versus speeding, slowing down, okay? When those velocity ones are. Then we look at this function, okay? Here's a particle. V sub t is the what of the particle? Position, velocity, or acceleration? What do you think V sub t would be? Velocity. velocity, okay? So what is the velocity at two seconds? Well, you just stick a 2 in here. 2 to the 4th minus 8 times 2 squared plus 20. 2 to the 4th is 16. This is 32 plus 20 is what? Like 4? What's the particle's acceleration at time equals 2? To find the acceleration, acceleration is the what of the velocity? First derivative. So it's 4t cubed minus 16t, and then the 20 disappears, put in a 2. So 4 times 
8 is 32 minus 32, it is 0. It's not speeding up or slowing down. Okay, its acceleration at 2 is 0. It's just going to constant velocity. So is it speeding up, slowing down, or neither? Well, it's neither. Okay, let's look at another one. Particle moving. t to the fourth minus 2t squared plus... So this is the, its position function. So we want to know its velocity at 1. So what do we have to do with the position function? First derivative. So the first derivative is 4t cubed minus 6t squared plus 6t. We slap in a 1. We get 4 minus 6 plus 6, which is 4. The velocity is 4. What direction is it going? Right, left, or neither? <coughs> well, when velocity is positive, we think of it going to the right. Velocity negative, it's going to the left. Okay? Max wrote an algorithm that searches for a specific term within a large set of terms. The following function gives the length of the search in the number of steps over a set of n terms. Okay? What's the instantaneous rate of change at when he finds 10 terms? So instantaneous rate of change is the what? Derivative. So you got to take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of the natural log of 0.9n? Okay, 1 over 0.9n times 0 0.09, right? Those cancel, so it's 1 over n, so it's basically 1.6 over n. If we slug in, plug in, not slug in, plug in 10 for this, we get 0.16. So it's 0.16, does it steps per second or steps per term? Because we're talking about the number of terms over the set of n terms. Do we talk about seconds at all? No, we just talk about terms, the number of steps per term. The following function gives the cost in producing x gallons of wood stain. What's the instantaneous rate of change when of the cost when 100 gallons are produced? Okay, so we have to take the first derivative of the cost which is 0.0012x squared minus 0.002x plus 0.1. All right. So we're putting in 100. 100 squared is 10,000. 10,000 times this moves it five places to the right, right? So it's 1, 2... 120 minus, this is 100, so multiply this by 100, it's like minus 0.2 plus 0.1. So, ooh, does this must be 12. 12 minus 0.2 plus 0.1. There we go. Which is 11.9. Would it be dollars or dollars per gallon? When we're talking rate of change, it's always per something. It's $11.9 per gallon. Okay. Ooh, last one. Bear studies the extinction, extinction of a bear population in Siberia over time. The following function gives the number of bears since bear started tracking it. Okay, what's the instantaneous rate of change of the number of bears after two years? Well, the first derivative of this you take negative 0.3 times the 2190. I don't know what that is. 600 and something, probably. 657. E to the negative 0.3t, right? If you stick in a 2, what? 
If you stick in a 2, you get e to the point negative 0.6 times 657. So it's negative 361, I think. So the rate of change of bears is negative 361 years per bear or bears per year? Probably bears per year. Okay. Okay.